Are you ready and super psyched? I'm ready and super psyched. You got a lot to say. Got a, got a lot in your brain today. As always. Are you going to talk like that the entire time? I'm Batman. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. Welcome to the podcast. Do you like butter on popcorn? <laughs> Uh, it's too greasy. <laughs> it's too, it sounds like it sounds like something Batman would say. <laughs> Helicopter. Helicopter. What? Pop it, everybody. Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. That's me, Jazzy Jay, other host of the podcast. Happy to be here with you today, brother. Are you excited to, to have some big conversation? Do you have lots of thoughts on your brain? I mean, I always have lots of thoughts on my brain. You know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, good, po- it's a good day to podcast. Yeah, I think so, too. I think yeah. so, too. I, I have had an interesting uh, uh, bit of of 75 hard update. Oh, do um, tell. Yeah, so there, there's it's a twofold thing. I had I had two big uh like realizations in the in the past week. Um the the first of which was that I got food poisoning on, oh. on Monday evening. Uh I've been <laughs> hearing the family text about lots of that seems like everyone who was at your house on Sunday or like 50% of the people there got uh some form of the the sponges some some kind of sponges yeah. yeah i think i think we had like maybe uh let's see how many people were there i don't know like let's say it was 12 adults i think i think seven of us Ugh. got got the sponges mm. it, it seems like something something had had gone awry everybody got sick on monday evening it was hilarious the next morning texting and be like oh my gosh we feel awful and it's like no way me too uh, except for you. Somehow you you were able to get through it. I managed to survive. It seems like people have narrowed in on the deviled eggs as the potential culprit, one of which I did eat, and yet I did not get sick. So I know, I know. I it's- don't know. I'm not questioning it, nor complaining. Um... But I'm just happy I didn't get sick because I was sick recently and I, I didn't care for it. It is the actual worst. Yeah. It is the actual worst. Um, but so it, it basically came down to this for me. So I got through Monday, got my 75 hard in, hit all my goals. Everything was good. Uh, and then it was the middle of the night that I that I woke up with it and was just like in severe pain, mm-hmm. you know, and just, yeah. Sponges the whole evening and the rest. Um, but that meant that Tuesday I found myself in a very dire position in terms right. of my my 75 hard challenge because I'm on, I think as of Tuesday was day 38. Man. Um, yeah, that I, that I was in the process. And so, you know, 38 days uh, or 37 rather where I had completed every single objective every day the whole time. And here I am on day 38 and it's like I can uh, by noon – my Fitbit had said I had like 173 steps. Right. Like you're just not moving. You're obviously not in a place where you can consume the protein challenge of your challenge. Right. The, the, like, yeah, the dietary right. aspect was just like off the table entirely. <clears throat> yeah. You know, Probably was- the idea of working out for a good 90 minutes was really off the table as well. It was. It was indeed. So my <clears throat> my like compromise with myself because I was... You know, it, it, I was having this like weird showdown because it it absolutely occurs to me that like there is there is no one holding me accountable to this challenge mm-hmm. other than me. Right. Like, you know, it's not like someone will be upset with me for missing a day, but like my genuine fear was disappointing myself. Right. You know, and it was like I really didn't want to be I don't want to like get to the end of it. And be like, you know, maybe that day I could have gone. Like maybe, like maybe I could have. And, and the, the fact is, I couldn't have. I mean, there's there there was no way that it was going to happen. Uh, but the the one thing that I that I had set for myself, like my goal was like, can I just get my ten thousand steps in? Like it's not a workout. I'm not going outside of my house. Like I'm not going for like a walk around the block or anything. Because I was like, you know, I've yeah. had Nuh-uh. zero. I've had negative calories today. Right. Um. You know, and so I, but that was, that was like my challenge to myself. So on, on Tuesday evening, as I was like starting to be like on the uptick a little bit, I was like just pacing in my living room back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Can you get to 10,000? Can you get to 10,000? And it was so sad. I mean, it was like, I would hit like 6,000 and I would like, you know, I'd sit down and be like, man. I'm exhausted. I don't, I don't know if, and you know, I and can't like, move. 
the thing too is that like you're and this is like the, the Fitbit uh, counter gives you like each day it's like you're on like a streak. Yeah. You know, and so like, I, I'm mm-hmm. on I, like my 38 day streak is in jeopardy, and it's like I will not lose my streak. Never. <laughs> this is gonna happen. Yeah. Um. And so slowly but surely, I just kind of like kept <laughs> kept peacefully walking just back and going. forth, kept going back and forth, kept going back and forth. Finally, was I hit the number, and I, I think I like literally closed out the day with like. 10,040 right you know, like, it was like like uh, my final steps will be up the stairs to my bed <laughs> yeah. upstairs to my bed and I'm out yeah um so I I made that I made that which was which was good uh and I'm I'm just going to basically allow that day and not feel like my challenge broke yeah I, I think that's uh pretty okay that's like uh like what what standards are you holding yourself to they're like don't let your pride get in the way of your accomplishments yeah, or sort of health even, yeah or health know, it's like, like yeah you're right like i think um there's this is like the one of the weird things about challenges like this where like it's like 75 hard like can you do this for 75 days and it's like the goal of the challenge i think is like at the end like you will develop some new habits hopefully you maybe took like two or three steps forward and we'll take like just one or two steps backwards and like you're just over like that's the intended impact of the challenge right but sometimes what's weird about like lengthy challenges like this is that the act of the challenge itself is actually not healthy that healthy right yeah it's like are you putting yourself in harm's way in the name of being healthy and it's like if you're doing that then you're not doing it right yeah like so there there's like some weird stuff like um even just on these, like uh, the thirty-day Peloton thing, I'm doing one. Also, you look great, by the way. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. Like, you like is, noticed the difference? I've absolutely noticed the difference. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. You are like you're like yesterday. I know you were like you were kind of like tensing your uh, forearms, and yeah. I was like, you can see like the outlines of your muscles. Like, oh coming man, through. I'm so, wearing long sleeves. I know, I know, I know, man. man. Like, gotta show everybody the pythons. I have this, I have this weird. So when we were kids and we were um we had you know instant messenger on the computer. AOL instant messenger. AOL instant yeah. messenger. We had this computer chair that had like a nice tall back on it yeah and oftentimes the way i would sit at the computer was with the chair turned around and my armpits like wedged on top of the chair and oh, like right. my arms hanging down to the keyboard and as like a um you know high schooler who was running cross country and didn't have much fat on him this would make the veins in my the, this act would, I would like you know constrict blood getting to my arms basically right, yeah, yeah. but the veins in my arms would be like popping like crazy yes and like i always thought like it looked really cool and so it's like i had this weird problem now as an adult where i'm like i want my i want my arms to look like that and i want my like, veins back like, I, want, I want that back but it's like but you didn't even look that good then. It was really just how you were sitting on the chair. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, but like, I think about it, and sometimes I'll see like some like some semblance of it. And I'm like, oh, I'm close. I'm okay, it's yeah. coming. It's coming. <laughs> yeah. No, I, dude, this is a hilarious thing. But I, I mean, I definitely get it because like my, my right arm will show my veins, yeah, uh, really nicely. It's like I've got like a good pattern, and then like my left arm a little bit, but not not nearly as good. Mm-hmm. And uh, so like recently we went through the whole uh, like getting a tattoo sleeve yeah. thing. And one of my big qualms is that for some reason, and I have no idea why, I imagine it on my right arm. Sure. But my right arm has my good vein patterns. Ah. And so I'm like, well, I have to do it on my left arm then, you know, because like I don't want to cover up my good vein patterns. You could, you just need to go in there like on, on a real vascular day when your veins are popping, you know, and just like, well, maybe this would be a problem. Maybe it'd be weird to like, you, should, you need to like do that, draw where the veins go and they go on a day where they're not like poking needles at your veins Uh this is turning into a weird thing but then you could have like (laughs) if it's going all the way down your arm you could just have like a snake right on top of like the vein or something like all the way up whoa you know then it would look then maybe that could even accent it it could like maybe you could create like a visual effect a visual effect yeah that'd be very (laughs) a little gutter snake yeah every time you like (laughs) that dude you like flex your arm it's like moving that'd Uh, be weird i feel like someone turned off the podcast someone did yeah never mind we're so sorry about talking about that anyway peloton thing this is something I have noticed uh, going on. One, the idea, yeah, I've had days where I'm like, oh, man, uh, is it even worth it? Like, is it that big a deal if I miss one day? And I'm like, no, the streak. Like, when I log in, I can I get see. You. Yeah, num- I get you. I can you. see, like, I'm like, I'm like three rows of calendar now. I'm like, oh, man, I don't want, like, a, a white dot to appear in my streak. Right. No, Can't have not. that. Uh, yeah, so that's better thing. But, um, like, certain days, I have definitely been like, you know what? 
I'm just I'm just doing like a low impact ride today. Like that's gonna be my ride. I don't have to go like all out every single day. Sure. Like certain certain days, it's I think it's more like do less today so you can do more tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> kind of thing. I get that 100%. <clears throat> but I had I have uh, other days, um, you know, I will pick like a really challenging ride to go do. And something I've noticed is that you think on the days when you're doing like a low impact ride, it would be like a relief almost. Like, okay, I don't really have to try that hard today. I'm just going to be down here and I'll just get it done. Um, but I have noticed that like when I pick like uh, like a hills ride or something, the time just flies by. Whereas, like, if I'm doing a low impact ride, I'm like staring at the clock the whole time, like, oh man, it's like it's like boring, right? And it just it feel it's like in a weird way, like even though the ride itself is easier, it's like almost harder to do the ride because it's boring the whole time and Uh it feels like it takes longer. And so often, even if I'm not like feeling crazy motivated to do a hard ride, but I just pick one anyway, like I will become motivated in the ride sure sure <laughs> and then sure, i'm sure. just like let's go for it yeah 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 no i i definitely get that like I, I think even that goes back to the the early days of of cross country like i remember occasionally our coach would give us like a fun run day on on a friday which meant we only ran like four to five miles that day right yeah. uh, but i do remember like getting back from those like oh thank goodness it's just friday we don't have a meet tomorrow like we're just going easy you know it's it's like a it's like a like a chill day right those would always be the days like and i, I think for me, my mental preparation for the exercise is yeah. so vital to my approach to it. Right. So it's like if I'm like, you know, mentally psyching myself up to do it, then it's like, all right, let's go. You know, but if I'm if I'm sort of like today's easy, it's no big deal. I'm barely even taking it seriously. Right. Then I'll get out there and I'll just kick my butt. Yeah. You're and just I, like, yeah, I don't have to try. I don't even know to try and it's like you will still have to try you just have to try yeah Yeah. there is this um one function you can do on the peloton called lane break okay which is like instead of staring at an instructor who's like you know saying motivational things and telling you what to do yeah it's more like it's more like a gamified thing oh that's where it's got like six different lanes and you're like controlling a like a rolling wheel and as you like adjust the resistance the wheel will move left to right into the different lanes or whatever okay and there'll be like um like certain tracks you're supposed to be in at certain times. So like that's cool. Yeah, that's it, very clever. It is very clever. And like, you know, there'll be like sometimes it'll just be like, just be in this track and you'll be getting the points. Right. And like you get like points for if you're in the right track at the right time. Right, right, right. Right. And then there'll be like a big green section where it's like, OK, while you're in the green section, you have to be pedaling this fast the entire time. Uh huh. Or like there'll be like an orange section and it's like, all right, if you can like go for 200% for the length of this orange thing, you'll get like a point boost or whatever. Nice. So, yeah. But so I've been, I've done it like three or four times throughout the month so far. And it has been an extremely interesting thing because like when you're with the instructors or whatever, they'll be like, all right, set it up to like 50 or 55 or 60. And it's like, or they'll say the numbers out loud and you have to like watch the number go up and down and you can get very in your head about like, oh, this is a big number. Oh man, I don't know if I can do it. Right. But like when you're doing the, um, the lanes, it's like, Clear, the further right you get, the harder it is. Like, you know that. But I am not looking at the resistance number very much. I'm just like, I just need to move the wheel to get to where I need to be. It's, and it's like, it's complete. It's as if that number is blind to me. And it's like, sometimes I will look down and notice it and be like, oh my gosh, am I going this fast at this number right now? Like, yes. You know, it's like, ah, ah. It's, it's so weird how much your brain can get in your own way and like stop you from doing things no it is it, i mean and that that actually like ties in nicely with like my next bit of information but yeah, yeah it's like your own like psychological calibration if you will it's it's like it plays such a vital role in so many different aspects of your life i think yeah you know and so it's like i i think when it comes to uh, um like various kinds of, of exercise. It's like whenever I've been able to make it like a very social sport, I've always found that I excel very quickly at it because I pay less attention to like the physical, you know, aspect of it. Like that, like, like me, my body, like fatiguing and stuff. Right. Because I'm there to like chat with my friends. But that usually means that like, <clears throat> because I'm not paying attention, like oh, my muscle hurts or I'm tired or I'm sweating or, you know, like whatever. I just, keep going right you know and i do great yeah and then and then if it is like the type of thing where i'm just like out like on a run by myself all i think about the entire time is how far have i gone how fast am i going right how much is left Mm -hmm. like should i turn back now am i even gonna make it 
is, what do I, why am I even doing this? Right. You know, like, and, cause I went for a run the other day and that was exactly like the entire time. I was just like, what am I, what am I doing out what here? What am it's I like, doing? Oh, yeah. Um, but so I, uh, the other big thing with, with 75 hard is that I've been reading a lot of nonfiction and I remember at the very beginning of the pop, I think probably in the first, I'm going to, I'm going to guesstimate maybe like first 20 episodes. I feel like we talked a fair bit about like self-help books uh, a little bit for sure. Do you remember this? Yeah, like, I know I've talked I know we've talked about like the um seven habits of highly effective people on a variety of occasions. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You're right, you're right. Um and and so but like that's that's been something where I'm I have always been very resistant to to these to this style of reading. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, for for the most part, like if if people ever asked me for like a book recommendation, I would be willing to bet that like out of 10, maybe one of them would have been nonfiction. Right. And then everything else would have been some, some type of fiction. Right. Um, and so, but because I've been, I've been like burning through these books through 75 hard, because one of the aspects is, is reading these books each day. Like non or self-help books. Yeah. yeah. Nonfiction books, I guess. Nonfiction. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I feel like the ones that I've been reading, I don't know that they all fall into the category of self-help so much as just being extremely informative and definitely falling into things that I like to talk about. Right. Um, but one of the ones that I just finished reading was called Dopamine Nation. And it has so much to do, and, and maybe this is obvious and maybe it's not, but the book was a lot more about like addiction than I expected. Okay. You know, because I tend to think of like dopamine as like a like something that actually mentally goes through my brain i would say multiple times a week i don't know if i could go so far as to say like daily but like i can recognize like oh man it totally just gave me like a huge dopamine hit and like i feel like yeah you know, i feel excited or, or like you know jazzed or whatever right. like you know I'm, I'm like i'm like amped um and so as as you sort of go through it it's i i just really feel like it's a it's a very fascinating book to read. And, and I will offer a disclosure that some of the examples are a little explicit in, in nature in terms of like what like what somebody might be addicted to just as sort of like a heads up if you if you dive into it. Um, but what was kind of fascinating about it is that something that you do daily uh, and, and like smartphones is, is, is such an easy thing to like look at for this. Like, yeah. we, you know, if we ever need a little dopamine hit, we can literally just pull out our phone and something interesting is there to look back at us. Right. Um, and the, the thing is though, is that it's kind of this, like the, the more you do that and, and the longer that relationship continues, like the less it will give you each time. And therefore the further you have to push it each time in order to kind of get like, that initial hit again. Right. This is like, I feel like it's a very similar thing with, you know, your morning cup of coffee. Yeah. Like when you first start drinking coffee, that coffee will wake you right up and you will be like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. And now I'm like, yeah, I can drink three cups of coffee. And it's like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. It's like, am I, am I like, yeah, am I, yeah. am I like super stoked? Um, and this can be the case, like, you know, like with your favorite movie, for example, like you watch it for the first time and you're like, that was the best thing ever. And then it's like, you go back and you like want to watch it again. And it's like, you, and there's no doubt about it that people can like rewatch things and still love them over and over and over again. But it's it's so hard to like get it back, you know, right. like like that first that same experience, that same experience. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I even remember like there were moments as kids where there would be examples of this, like where um, we had a trampoline for a period of time. And I remember our younger brother and I, Tyler, would go out there and like we would <clears> play a game where it's like. I don't know, ninjas versus aliens or something. And we would be ninjas and we would be fighting off aliens that were just like invisible creatures. Right. Yeah. In, impeding onto the trampoline. And right. It, it gave you a reason to do like jump kicks right, and like, punches. Kapow! Exactly. Right, yeah. You know, and it'd be the type of thing. It's like, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. You know, and then it's like the next day, like, you want to go play ninjas and aliens? And it's like, you get out there and it's like, I never sort of did all this. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if I can get it back. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, it must have just been a yesterday thing. Why, <laughs> like, why isn't it fun again? Um, 
Anyway, but that's that's not always the case. And so sometimes you'll find that there are... Ninjas vs. Aliens. That's like a great movie, by the way. Ninjas vs. Aliens. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I do like it. I do like it. Maybe it can be our, our second feature film after uh, the, the hit classic, 27 Butts. 27 Butts. The sequel, Ninjas vs. Aliens. <laughs> no, what? Nobody saw it coming. Nobody saw it coming. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the Butt family, secretly, all black belts. That's right. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> that would be such a hilarious twist. If it's this gigantic family but everyone's super into karate <laughs> that would be really funny that would i think we can add that to our head cannon doesn't seem, doesn't seem hard doesn't seem hard at all right. like, you don't even have to address it there could just be like a bunch of like multicolored belts like framed on the walls and stuff uh, right like, throughout the home and it's like what's with all the karate what's stuff all the it's karate like, stuff nobody talks about it it's just like clearly karate is a big yeah. deal i feel i feel like yeah you don't have to address it at all but then at some point in the movie you can also have like one of the classic way too long peter fights the chicken fights oh you know yeah like, like family guy all of a sudden the two people are just fighting all the way through the house right, <laughs> right everything right. is getting wrecked maybe the toilet gets knocked over right maybe the toilet yeah that's exactly right yes the toilet gets over and then there were none <laughs> and then there were none and then there were none um Anyway, where was I going with this? Okay, so, yes, but as I'm reading through, I can't believe we got to 27 butts from Dopamine Nation. It's look, like, look, you know, 27 butts clinical has, psychology, it, too. It is applicable. It has so many, you know, interpretations, and it's so deep. Right, I know. Right, it's, true, yeah. it's true. It's true. It has more depth than people expect. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but, uh, nah, I didn't even mean to. <laughs> so, as I'm reading through this book, though, as I'm, like, hearing all of these examples, it was amazing to me how quickly I was like, man, that's a thing. Like that's, I was like, you know, I got, I'm like halfway through the book and I'm like, I'm done with social media entire. I'm deleting it that's all. It. Like, I'm just like, I'm, I'm canceling everything. And, uh, it's, it's been very fascinating to see just how quickly, like my awareness about this particular thing has been able to, for me to like now spotlight aspects of my, my personality right? where it's like, oh man, this is definitely like this is a thing, a piece of, of, of what's happening. Um, so it's, it's one of those where b because there is, a, you know, that degree of explicit nature to it, I'm, I'm sort of like maybe slightly hazy about going around. Of course, now I'm explaining it on a podcast. So people have now heard that I've recommended it. Um, but uh, it's been it, it's been very interesting. And I think that it's a really it's been fun for me how these nonfiction reads have have definitely been affecting my life. Yeah. And now what's happening, like normally I would have like a backlog of like audible credits, right. you know, and it's just sort of like, I've got six. Do you have any recommendations, something I can read? And, you know, sometimes people give me something and I'm like, I don't really like, you know, whatever. Um, like it, like it just like sits in my library and it's like, maybe right. eventually I'll get to it. That's what happened with name of the wind. And then yeah. Ended up uh -huh. being amazing. Look at the difference. Right. But so now, <clears throat> now I'm like, I'm burning through my audible credits and now it's like, I'll finish a book and I'm like, well, you know what? If there's one justifiable purchase, I can make it's books. It's, right. You know, um, I got here eventually uh, from the start of this conversation because we were talking about your Peloton workouts. And I think it's because it's, it's like the, and people know this already, but it's like, the idea of making change in your life like has to come from inside of yourself right like you you need to want to make the change and and so like the, i think an example that they give is that like alcoholics are are, are like aware of the fact that drinking alcohol is bad it's like, right they're not like oblivious to that yeah it's just reaching that stage where like they have decided like i'm going to i'm going to do this right and so I think that those are a lot of big things that have been happening to me lately where I'm like, okay, I'm going to fix this thing and I'm going to go for it. All right. I'm going to try. Well, excellent. Yeah. One of my new, um, this is also coming from just the Peloton challenge. It's weird. Yeah. The Peloton challenge is, um, the, this, um, I guess my, my new like internal mantra or just like, um, self help, self help phrase that I keep like saying to myself and trying to like put in front of myself is just the phrase you can do hard things. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, like they say it, um, or the, the instructor I use a lot is, um, Emma Lovewell. She's definitely my favorite instructor on Peloton. If you need a recommendation, good place to start, but I think, you know, it's like, you'll be, it, it feels like they always know exactly the time to say certain motivational phrases. I guess they are professionally good at it. But yeah, 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 I'm sure know. there's a degree of art form to right. it. Yeah. So it'll be like, you know, right at like the peak moment or something. You'll be like, I'm so tired. But, you know, they'll hit you with like, what are these things? And I feel like that one really just stuck with me. It was like, you can do hard things. And it was just like, man, what a good 
thought like how often do you not do something or like or shy away from something like that's just going to be like difficult like i can't do it or something it's like no you you can do hard things probably you're already doing hard things and so that that's like my new that's my new mantra that whenever i think i have something i'm like i'm really not looking forward to or like this is going to be hard just like no that's okay it will be hard but you can do it and yeah, yeah that's that i mean and that that's a that's a very it's very good reminder and um like is this the type of thing would you, because this I, I just had one of these these breakthrough moments to myself, would you put a physical sign in your house that says the words, you can do hard things? Benjamin, I'm so, so glad you asked me this question because you're completely unaware of something that I have in the works, which is that I emailed our graphic designer, Vaishan, for just a personal project. And I was like, Vaishan, I need you to make me a motivational sign that is motiv- that has that has a font that you can come up with that is um motivational and challenges the person reading it but it's also welcoming because it's going to be hanging in just like the kids playroom as well Uh right right, (laughs) so it's like it's like a welcome thing to the family but also if you're on the bike like you're staring right at and it's like work harder sort of thing Uh and it and the phrase is just yes you can do hard things because directly in front of the bike is a square an open square section of wall that is begging to have something in it and right now you're just staring straight ahead at nothing so i'm just waiting on the artwork back from vaishan for my you can do hard things sign this is the most <laughs> remarkable i cannot believe that i that i landed already, on that question already that in is, the works that is so fantastic <laughs> because okay so i can't remember the book the fault in our stars yeah refers to these like little i think they call them encouragements oh uh, yes yeah i think that is what they call the um um Isaac's mom or something or maybe no it's is it Hazel Grace's mom has encouragements all over the house right like like yeah. just like the little things that say like a like a sweet sentiment or right. whatever yeah and I I feel like I read that book and it, and it, it when I was watching it it like sort of clicked this gear in my mind it was like it occurs to me that I have seen a lot of those out there before and it occurs to me that like it's not my particular brand of decor it but, yeah, but, I remember reading the book and being like, I'm never hanging an encouragement in my house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Nothing wrong if you do at all. Um, but I know that that was like, it was almost like someone gave me permission to have that feeling yeah. when I was reading that book. Um, and so in our house, we don't have anything that that had said anything. But I recently stumbled across one that has like resonated with me in a huge way. Mm-hmm. And so we had a sign made. Is it the sign? I think I saw it this past weekend. Yeah, it is was it hanging... the one that says you'll think of something. It is. OK. Yeah, I saw that. And I was like, Ben has an encouragement in his house. <laughs> I do. I do. We, and we had it made because I, I saw it hanging in your house and I had not seen it before. And I was like, I can't believe you didn't tell me about this. This is a huge development. I, 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 like, know, I, know. Like, I can't believe you hugged this in your house. And I don't know about it. <laughs> It was a big deal. It was definitely a big deal. But like, I love it. I love it so much. And and it's like, it's funny because the way that you were just describing yours, I was like, this is the exact relationship I have with mine. Yeah. Because it's, I am like, unfortunately motivated by, I think like stress and anxiety. Mm-hmm. It's sort of like the, the thing that typically like makes me push forward is the, like the fear that I'm not doing enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, I, I am, I, I have this odd problem, I think with, and I'm sure that like others probably do as well, but I'll have these like pieces of my personality that I know about myself, but like, I can't put them together, you know, where it's like, I am always fearful that I won't be able to come up with like a creative solution to a problem while constantly like one of the biggest, like nagging parts of my personality is coming up with ideas all the time right you know and it's sort of like how is it that i can come up with 10 ideas a day and can't assure myself that i can come up with a creative solution to a problem right you know and so and like i don't know why those won't like coalesce the way that like i want them to Mm -hmm. because it should like and, and this is something that has been true about me i mean you can probably affirm this as far back as I can remember yeah. that like that I've had this, you know, personality trait. So it's like, why can't I convince myself of that? Um, so I saw this, this like little phrase once upon a time and I was like, man, that just like that. It just like hits because it's, it's like you will, you know, it's like you will think of something right. Like, 
like because that's what you do right like it's all you do right it's probably like your number one strength it's so interesting like the certain like yeah like combination of words that can like unlock certain things in your brain because you're like yeah, i read like you'll think of something and i was like this is such a perfect sign for ben for all the reasons you just said yeah and i was like thinking about it later and i was just like like what like what made it so per like what what made it so perfect for you because i think like when i read that it's like like you said, like you have trouble like internalizing that particular sentiment. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I think for me, it's like it is something that is like extremely internalized where it's just like, yeah, I'll think of something like like it's of course like I don't I don't it's like it, it does bring me like a lot of calm a lot of times. It's just like like I like it, it's a it's a struggle. I don't have to have that like that makes it difficult for me to understand when other people Oh, don't have that. Don't have it. Have that you feeling. Know? Yeah. It's like, you know, like at, su at some point something happened in my life and I was just like, yeah, we'll figure it out. Like it, whatever it is, we'll always figure it out. Right. Like the, things will work out. It's like at some point I think my brain just decided that and it's just like, okay, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and it, what's interesting about it to me is that like, you know, everybody's always like, um, you know, like fearing the unknown or the only thing right. to fear is the fear, fear itself. It's like, I feel like there's this like sort of like, ah, that's very wise, you know, like yeah. sentiment attached to it. But it's almost like, I think really the unknown is like, if you were to source back most of your fears to their roots, mm -hmm. I would be willing to bet that in most cases, that's all it is. It's always unknown right like you know and i and because i was talking to alice about this exact same thing the other day and I, I was saying like let's say you know you you fear spiders you know it's like i and she was like because that was her example mm -hmm. she was like well no like if you're afraid of spiders you're just afraid of spiders you're not afraid of like the unknown with spiders and i was like i don't think that's true though because i think that if you went like let's say you went on like an educational path and you studied arachnids and so you went to school for two years and every semester you're taking class after class after class on like what they do, what they're capable of, the importance of them, you know, like all the different like species you're handling them, all these types of things. I bet you wouldn't be afraid of spiders at the end of it because you would know so much about them. Right. That by the end of it, it's like you don't have the unknown anymore. Right. Like you have like you have tackled the unknown. Right. And so it's, it's almost like a question of like, is it exposure therapy or are you just like learning more about the thing you fear? Yeah. I don't know if that's quite exposure therapy. I think exposure therapy would be like, all right, we're just going to lock you in a room with spiders. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sure. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Uh, not, not recommended. Not yeah, recommended. Yeah. Maybe not. Um, um, but so, I mean, that, that is sort of, but you're right. It's like education. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, and so I think that a lot of, a lot of like my where, where my fears stem from is if I don't already know the solution to a problem, then it's like it's unknown to me whether or not I will solve it. Right. And I think that it's that very thing that scares like the crap out of me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I would say that that's like this the biggest thing. I'm just like it's like I don't not I don't like not knowing how I will solve a problem and usually I can't rest until I do. Mm -hmm. And typically what happens is that once you solve a problem, there's just another problem. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, that's, which is a huge portion of, of existence, you know I mean? It's just like, you're, you're always kind of right. So it's the next thing. There's always the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. For which sure. is, which is very interesting. Um, I don't know how we got here, but that's, that is like, I think it would be interesting if you were the viewer at home, like, what is there something you fear and then if you were to if you were to like learn more about it is it possible it could impact that fear and i know that there are like 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 irrational fears toward things and i right. would say that this doesn't <clears throat> fall that that is a different probably psychological phenomenon right less less overcomable by just you know just exposure or education yes. yeah. also do you have a personal mantra that you would put on a sign in your house yes Okay, because yes. that's how we got there. Yeah. Because that's what the sign does for me. It's like, it's like, it is that affirmation. It's almost like letting me know. It's like, don't worry. Like, you will think of something. Right. It will be okay. Yeah. It's so interesting that you, you're so aware of it, though. I'm jealous. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm envy of this power. Well, on the other hand, I feel like you just are constantly just doing things that I would otherwise assume I, like, I, I couldn't do. 
oh, wow, this is extremely interesting. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> that's the OK. It's like like I think um, for like the twins birthday or something, you were building some sort of like um, uh, climbing like wall, climbing rock wall thing. And I was just like, oh, man, like, I don't think I could do that. And it's like, you know what? I bet I could do it. Yeah, it's like absolutely. I don't I don't have the tools and I haven't built something like it before, but I feel like it's it's just cutting wood and screwing it together exactly you know <laughs> yes yes exactly and th- that's a that's a very good point i mean like my my assumption and i feel like we would at one point in time you and i built a set of cornhole boards together mm-hmm. and i feel like during that experience it became glaringly obvious to me that if you got into like this this like building woodworking not that i'm like a woodworker or anything like that but like if you got into it you would be way better at it way faster than I've ever been able to pick it up. Oh, well, I do not. Rem- what about that experience made you think that about me? <laughs> because of angles. Oh. I feel like there's there's a lot to do with angles that I feel like, like, I got an A in geometry. I remember being good at it. I don't remember how to do much of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, no, yeah. You know, it's like, it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, this was a long time ago now. And I remember everything adds up to like 180, but I don't remember all of the rest of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and just trying to find like, I don't know, whatever protractors and such. Um, but I remember we were trying to figure out how to like get like the legs to like, to like swing out at like the right distance and the right height and you know like how like everything you need to do in order to make that happen and literally ever since that day i have saved the blank that we used as like a a jig oh okay so every i have probably made i don't know 15 sets of cornhole boards since then i've used the same jig every single time oh interesting so like i'm always i'm actually always using your math oh. <laughs> to, to finish these problems um which i think that like you know obviously with a lot of time spent with it i've been able to better understand a lot of how it works and i've done it you know a bunch of times mm-hmm. and so like uh, like the way that it all comes together makes a lot more sense in my brain also cornhole boards are squares mostly um not tremendously difficult to right to piece together but um yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I have a feeling that if you ever did venture into these waters, you'd probably just <laughs> blow right past me. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. But uh, you've been doing it for so much longer and to build a lot of things. But I always, what I always find interesting is that anytime I'm doing any sort of like medium or just even like light c- construction, anything with tools, like with another person, how almost everyone has invented their own way of doing it. Yes. Which is unbelievable to me that like so many different ways like there could be this many different ways to hang a curtain rod on a wall you know and it's like all you got to like in what method are you figuring out where to put the holes yes (laughs) yeah and i remember that uh when we were moving you into your new house you guys had this big mirror that you uh i think you've since taken it down but it used to be over your couch yeah and i remember like we were getting in there and like you guys were just like let's just put stuff up like while we're here while we got the tools while we got people you know and so it was cool because we were like going off the truck and then like onto the walls right um but your father-in-law was there and i remember that like i think it was our good buddy mike um your father-in-law and me and all three of us had like just a very different approach to this exact thing like where do the holes go like yeah do you measure off of a level do you measure off of the ceiling do you measure from the floor you know like right it, and it's all like this triangulation of like these two holes need to go into the wall in order to hang this thing <laughs> you're right yes <laughs> and, and i remember being like i am trying really hard to follow your father-in-law's approach but i don't think i understand it but i also hung this exact same mirror at your old house and it worked then and you know, so yeah. I'm, I'm like i don't know what to do and, and that that's like one of those uh like the uh what is what is the what is the word for it called it's it's like the i don't know like my the information was was so different from me that it that i was like i was like shutting down i was like i don't know if i can think about all this like i can't right. i can't figure out how my method connects with his method at all and therefore i don't know how to do his method and now i'm useless right yeah <laughs> i'm just gonna stay back <laughs> just if you it, need me to help lift it <laughs> yeah it got a, the it got on the wall it did in the, the end it yeah did. it is it's interesting how you know, when you have your own system it's like, this, this makes sense it works i got it right uh, yeah but it's so weird yeah with like uh picture frames and stuff where you know you think oh yeah i want it right here but it's like how are you gonna how are you gonna figure out where on the back of the frame that thing goes versus where it goes on the wall? Yeah, and what's your starting point? And yeah, all that stuff. 
when I was hanging my encouragement, yeah, you'll think of something on yeah. my wall. Mm-hmm. It, it did take me like 17 minutes longer than I wanted. It yeah, to. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. I was, I mean, I was hanging curtain rod this past weekend and I think it's the most frustrating thing to hang. Cause it's like, if you're hanging, typically when you're hanging a picture, everything's really close together and it's very easy to get the level from like one nail to the other or right. something, or you probably just need one nail, you know, sure, whatever. Sure. This is like, you can't, the, everything you're, excuse me, everything you're putting on the wall is very far apart from each other. And not only need you to get two things to line up, but probably you need three things to line up. Yep. And it's just like, and if they don't line up, then the rod's going to be crooked. <laughs> it's like, it's going to be very uh, apparent and, from and, across. Yeah. And you're probably only going to be off by a little bit, meaning that if you're going to put new holes in the wall, you're going to have to move everything. So you're not just re-drilling a bigger hole into the wall. And it's, uh, but you know what? I got it all right first try, so no problems. Nice. Yeah. I'm so proud of yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Current right. rods. Transition. Anyway. Transition! Okay, Jay. So I have kind of an interesting question because um, I, I had not really truly considered this before. But like, you know how I've posed the question before about like what our generation will be like in retirement? Because like, I, I, I tend to think about like our grandparents and associate them with like maybe like you know, uh, quilting or antique cars or like, like right. things of that nature, uh-huh. things that maybe they wanted to do for most of their life that like now they have either the time or resources to do. Oh, that is not how I land it. Elderly hobbies. Oh, really? Yeah. Give me your elderly hobbies. I think that my interpretation has been that like elderly hobbies are elderly hobbies because these are hobbies you can do with your present physical fitness level oh interesting yeah okay well it will still work based on my example okay but so one of the things that i that i have often hypothesized is that as our generation reaches sort of that stage is that because we've grown up so much with video games that in retirement it may if there may be like this like really big shift that like that like maybe gaming could become like a like an older man's game. Yeah, like the seniors division at the esports tournaments are like insanely competitive. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because because I think that like what you'll have is a lot of people who maybe have looked for the time available to play their games and now have it. Right. You know, in spades. Yeah. Um and so <clears throat> that I think it's always been this like kind of big curiosity to see uh like what these what these like alterations look like generation after generation after generation Mm -hmm. like even you know our parents for example are you know they've they've entered their 60s and you know i mean they like have ridden multiple century bicycle rides in a month before which is a a hundred plus mile ride right you know I'm, i'm like endlessly impressed with with the level of physical fitness they're still yeah they're still you know putting to the test today um but on the flip end of that is the, another interesting phenomenon that i think is possibly going to have like reverberations and that is on like the the children end of the spectrum because when we grew up we watched a lot of like cable television yeah we were we were surprisingly considering what we do now we were a nickelodeon household yeah for sure we watched a lot of a lot of nicktoons a lot yeah and um with with that i feel like we were constantly being exposed to all of the toys that were in the toy aisle at walmart Mm -hmm. you know and it was the type of thing where like that was where mom would go to like get groceries and household essentials and all the rest and she would bring us you know with her and then while we were there we of course wanted to go to the toy aisle because we wanted to see the things that we had seen on tv you know and then and plead our case for why we needed you know the new attack packs Mm -hmm. um which was Mm -hmm. a toy that we had as kids still have them yeah at my house right now it is interesting that you would i don't know like it's i don't it's interesting if that's what was going through your mind as a kid when we went to the store because my interpretation of watching most commercials when we were kids was mom won't buy these. <laughs> like, oh, like it, it like these are things other kids might one day own. Like I, I rarely watch commercials under the assumption that I was going to be allowed to own anything. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I, I'm, I have, I have no ability to say which perspective is more likely to be more common. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I would say that the thing that I always thought was 
they they always were able to make them i was even as a kid able to understand that like they clearly went and set up like a really cool course to show off this new dune buggy remote control vehicle right where it gets to jump off little dirt ramps and skid and throw dirt at the camera and stuff like that and it's like yeah i don't have that in my backyard and and that was the type of thing where it's like mom and dad are not going to let me build that the backyard either right um although i probably would have had some amount of ambition to try hey, you can do uh, it now man i know it's true you it's can true. go build a, you know an rc track in your backyard if you want i'd have to do it on my land but i can i could put it somewhere you can do it I, this is a good idea yeah all right we'll, we'll trace that we'll come back to it you probably get really awesome rc cars now that go way faster and have battery life that isn't 10 minutes possibly even like like gasoline gasoline pa- oh, no, this is all it's all good thinking it's all good thinking mm-hmm. anyway <laughs> so the the point is though is that now as we as we fast forward to like our kids generation uh there is there is a little bit of a difference that i think will exist in terms of the relationship with toys because, and, and I don't know this for sure. I mean, like I, I certainly know that our, like even Addison already who can, you know, pick up a block already has many toys. Right. Um, but we have two things that I think are structurally very different from when we were kids. And that is streaming services for one, which yep. just don't have commercials. So like you're not interrupted in your show every like five, six minutes and being shown yeah. some other or new toys it, yeah. right exactly um but in addition to that is like there is the ability to uh click list or order you know groceries or household essentials oh, right. online yeah you know which means that for us as kids once a week we were going to some version of a grocery store with mom to get the that week's right load. exactly like if you know if mom if mom's going to walmart it's like yeah she might only be intending to buy groceries but we the kids know there's a toy section yes and you know what as a parent it's really hard to overcome you know children's nagging for certain things yes especially when the alternative is that they're going to be like really loud and screaming and in public and sure, sure. and you're just like whatever it's five bucks you're good <laughs> yeah right yeah. right um but so be- because i think we're bypassing a couple of those aspects it it does feel like and and i think that as a whole as a as a you know collective group of people uh like the idea of consumerism has just become much more visible Mm -hmm. um whereas i think that when we were growing up we were sort of in like the heat of it yeah like like existing you know right in in its fullest form because tvs were you know household essentials at that point in time and and whatever um and so I, I guess I'm just I'm somewhat curious as time goes on or or even like what holidays might look like for our kids or mm-hmm. like, w- like, is there a chance like we will approach them slightly differently than like they had existed for us as kids? Like where maybe it's it, like, I don't know. D- does any of that track no i know what you mean like you your, know your kids are older enough to actually want and to play with toys regularly so you, right. you probably already have a much better basis for how much this could be true you're right i mean for sure i i think we we dodge a lot on the front of like yeah luke you know the luke and nick and nate will watch tv but it is never anything that has yeah commercials in it right but that doesn't mean they're not being impacted at least a little. Like one of the things I love watching um, a lot is the Cars movies. Um, you know, with like Lightning McQueen the, uh, and stuff. And like they 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 love it so much. And they like just this past weekend, uh, our parents got each of them like a little Lightning McQueen diecast car. And I can tell you that even before that, we already we already possessed some. Uh-huh. And there have been, I mean, days in a row where Nick has not let the car out of his hand, including sleep. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, wow. Like he is watching it and he loves the character and he loves it. He knows he has the card. He loves playing with it at all times. You'll hand him something and he'll just like reach his fingers around the toy and continue holding it. You know, <laughs> it is. I mean, it's adorable. So it's like the, the desire for to play with the things you're seeing on TV for sure is still there. But obviously, I mean, I mean, it's hard to say cars isn't, you know, just a giant commercial for merchandise on some level. 
Um, Pixar's not normally as bad about that, although like Toy Story is a movie about toys and they made toys based on the movie. That's, <laughs> so, that's, that's true. You know, that's true. Uh, it was a pretty good starting point for them. Um, but you don't exactly watch Wally, you know, necessarily. Yeah, you don't think. You don't I, think I, I need my own Wally. I need my own Wally toy, right? I mean, although that just sounds pretty cool. It does you know, sound pretty cool. I mean, as an adult, I want a Wally toy. Yeah. toy. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have a Wally bath toy, so it doesn't do very much. But um, Luke does like Wally, surprisingly. Okay. Yeah, he'll request it. He 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 has like certain things he wants to watch that he'll associate with certain people or like times of day or something. So whenever our mom comes over, he wants to watch Wally. <laughs> <laughs> and like mom does not like it. Oh no! <laughs> Which is surprising to you because it's like one of my favorite movies. But um, yeah, so they definitely do really like cars and we have like a little Lightning McQueen thing they can ride around on um but yeah I would say like Luke has been in a like you know d- uh, a, a big department store that has like a toy section like less than 20 times in his life right you know? right yeah so it's it's like because I mean and and this is like I can only ever speak to my own experiences but like one of the things that our mom did when we were growing up uh, at a certain age was like for our big birthday present she would give us like a hundred dollar bill and yeah. it was always the like for me it was like winning the lottery mm-hmm. i was so <coughs> excited about my hundred dollar bill it was like the i mean it's it's a kind of wealth that i know i will never ever ever feel again, <laughs> again in my life right <laughs> because it was just like it was infinite money um and i, I loved it i thought it was because it also seemed like it always came with like a no questions asked pass to like Toys R Us or to Walmart or, right. or something like that, where it was like mom knew that like because I had it, that like I also was allowed to go and use it for something. Right. And then it also seemed like on top of that, there weren't like any major restrictions on on like what it was. So if I wanted to buy like a TIE fighter and an X-Wing, it was like, no problem. If that's what you want, it, right. like, as long as it fits into the hundred dollars, like anything goes. Um, and so, yeah, like I know, I know for me, I coveted this stuff i was so excited about it like the marketing worked so well on me (laughs) um that being said i would say that my guess is that you were probably a lot better about getting something and then actually loving it and playing with it well that's that would be that would be my that would be my assumption is that i would probably be more excited to get the thing and i think you were probably more excited to have it like once like once it was there you would put it to good use. I suppose. I feel like the thing we collected a lot was one Hot Wheels. Yeah. And two like Star Wars action figures and right. stuff. I don't remember there being a ton of commercials for Star Wars action figures no, in particular. That's true. <clears throat> but it it's like it didn't need the marketing, you know, like it we, still took over the toy section. We found them. We found them. Um and then like Hot Wheels stuff it was like there were tons of Hot Wheels commercials for like specific tracks and stuff, but it was like all we ever wanted was just the cars, right? You know, we we're just gonna race them right in a straight line. <laughs> it was actually, yeah. I, I feel like we would have these Hot Wheels tournaments as kids, where we had this couch that sort of like faced into like a hallway, and we were able to uh, affix the tracks, so it was just side by side, straight line tracks, gravity fed. You'd put the cars on top, let them go. I think we would use a book to let them go or something, so that they would like drop at the same time mm. did we have a way to do that i think it was just a lot of hands a lot of hands okay yeah. it seems like that could have led to a certain amount of cheating but it, i mean it certainly could have we had to, you know you had two tracks so you had to have the car win on both tracks oh so you yeah. had to like do a reset because sometimes like one track would be like a little bit faster for whatever reason or another good point good point yeah. at yeah. the end though it also had this like little like plastic checkered flag thing so like as one of them fell through it would like push a pin and then it would cause the checkered flag to like fall to the side of whichever car won yeah which was amazing and then we'd also sometimes set up the video cameras so we can have a slow-mo replay. You never know. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it's like, well, we'll see. I do remember, though, that this was like, this, this was like, a, 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 I have no idea. Like, looking back on it, it feels like a huge part of our childhood. It's possible we did it like six times. Mm, it felt like, yeah, it felt like this was sometimes like the whole family's like Saturday night entertainment. Like, everyone get your Hot Wheels. We're making a 64 car bracket and we're going to narrow it down. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like, you yeah. know, and like we all had like our like little plastic suitcases full of them. And like, yeah. you, know, you go and sit down and sort of deliberate about like which cars are we going to try tonight. And right. It's like, yeah. How are we going to seed these cars? How's the track running? Yeah. Run, running fast tonight. <laughs> running it's a little tight. <laughs> yeah. Get a get a get a 
quick uh, wind check. Yeah. <laughs> Is AC running or <laughs> what's what's unbelievable and the, yeah what's unbelievable is that basically the same car would always win the entire the, tournament every time yeah because yeah. you know one car is just the fastest and it's just gravity right it's <laughs> true not really any skill but it was definitely it <clears throat> still felt like like maybe tonight's the night maybe you know? tonight like that yeah felt like my my butterfinger convertible will finally win right you know? I guess along the way you would find like plenty of opportunities to race cars that hadn't raced so maybe you were never figuring out the new like number one car but you would figure out like yeah where the butterfinger convertible oh it actually was like 10 slots higher than you thought it's faster than a bunch of other cars who'd thought who'd have thought yeah very yeah. exciting stuff mm. um where was i going with this though man this has been the my train of thought today it's just been running right like, off the where are we going? tracks yeah not uh, unlike some of our hot wheels hey. hey i think in general the toys we get for the kids will be largely driven by what we already know them to be interested in in and will be like because a lot of the toys we were marketed to as kids were like toys for the sake of toys like um do you remember like dr dreadful or creepy crawlers or something i do yeah right like there was no show or anything associated with dr dreadful or anything like that but it was like a big toy you could own right yeah (laughs) creepy crawlers were very very interesting because they were it was this like it was like the easy bake oven for i don't know like but like you didn't eat the things you just made these like little rubber molds of like scorpions and spiders and such yep and it was like i mean i think it was the same exact technology it was like a small like heated light bulb that would yeah that would just like uh you know cook a piece of plastic into like a hardened form right right yeah uh and and yeah that was another one though that i feel like we did a lot of. that's true we did that a lot yeah yeah and actually um i think uh I was sh- I was showing Beth that exact toy recently, and she was like, "Oh my God, Luke would love this!" And I think they do still make it. Do they really? I think they still make it. Yeah. I assume that this was one of those things where the melting of the rubber almost inevitably was not healthy. Oh, I mean, who's to say? Who's to say? Um, I don't. It probably isn't. I'm sure nowadays, whatever chemical you're using is like much more like approved and free of toxins and bpa free yeah bpa free whatever 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 yeah um i saw this is like one of those things that they're like i remember when we had creepy crawlers like we also had like a few of the plates from when dad was a kid that had like oh, old, yeah. older molds or something I, th- I, forget, I, I think what i was watching was that like the old molds like the the original one they made worked really well the problem was that it worked well because it was made out of materials that were like more dangerous or something. Lead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like this plate, the metal gets really hot. So kids are burning themselves, but the molds are great. Right. <laughs> Whereas right. like the modern day ones is like, well, these molds don't really work as good and the plastic's not as solid, but you know, no one gets hurt. So I guess there's that. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's probably you know, yeah. the whole point. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So here's another one that we did as a kid. And this was, this was like one of those things that I actually feel like probably would be more fun as an adult. Realistic. And what's even more fun is just watching TikToks about them because then you don't have to wait at all. But it's a rock tumbler. Oh, yes. I remember the rock tumbler. I remember dad telling us about the rock tumbler that he had when uh, like at, up at up at grandma and grandpa's. And it was like, what? It sounded like the absolute coolest thing in the world and I, I remember just like so anticipating the next time we went up to grandma and grandpa so we could get the rock tumbler yes and then i remember getting it and it being like the most disappointing thing i think i was under the impression <clears throat> like if you've ever been to like a um like one of those gift shops where you can like fill a small velvet bag with like extremely beautiful stones yeah you know the, there's probably like some fool's gold in there yeah like, you know like the little tiger's eye petrified wood and stuff mm-hmm. like that it's like i i think i was under the impression that we could take gravel from our driveway yeah put them in the rock tumbler and they would come out as gemstones right yeah like this is just an alchemy machine right yeah right. so like there there are all these misconceptions that i know as a kid i had over and over and over again where something was explained to me how it was going to work yeah i I've made some assumptions <laughs> i visualized it in my head and i feel like it's like Someone didn't explain this properly. Right. Like, you know, because I I think probably what it really comes down to is that, like, in order to have really neat final products from a rock tumbler is, for one, I think today you could just literally order rocks that are known to come out of the rock tumbler 
and be pretty. Yeah. But then it's also like you're just buying work. Yeah, like, like just buy the finished product. It's more, it's almost like this is more for a demonstration yeah. than it is fulfilling. But maybe. Like, I'm even thinking about it now. Like what, what kind of rocks would you put in there? <laughs> you know, like, I haven't seen this side of TikTok, I suppose. Oh goodness me. Well, you should definitely stumble across some good old fashioned some, some rock tumbler TikTok. Some, some rock tumbler TikTok. Yeah, I remember we had like gravel from our driveway in ours. And, it was like, <laughs> and if you don't know what a rock tumbler is, by the way, it is an erosion machine. It is a cylinder with basically light sandpaper on the inside that um will rotate endlessly. Because yeah. it's plugged in, and you put rocks in there, and the sandpaper or whatever the surf the surface on the inside of the cylinder will erode away the rock slowly, and eventually make it very smooth and ideally, I guess, very pretty. Yeah, yeah, that that's pretty yeah. much the that's pretty much the, like. So how do you how do you actually get like polished stones without going through and like using like a buffer disc or something like that? Right. This, this is like the very slow, like accelerated version of of nature. Right. Um, and I suppose that if you were like a like a geologist or even just like a hobbyist who knew enough about stones or uh, where you lived in the world happened to have neat stones available for discovery. Yeah. It would be a lot of fun to go out on a hike, pick up one, identify it, bring it home, run it through your rock tumbler, and then have the finished product. Yeah. Like, I could see that being fulfilling. Yeah. Because it's like, you you came up with something you wanted to find, you found the thing, you ran it through the process, and you got the end result. Yeah. Um, but I, I think the other thing that ultimately led me to some layer of disappointment about the rock tumbler is that I almost thought it was going to be a money printing machine and I would just basically have all the unlimited gemstones that I ever wanted. Right. You just go get the gravel, throw them in there, wait like a week. And then look, now you have like, uh, yeah. Amethysts, rubies, rubies sapphires, topaz. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is what comes from gra- driveway <laughs> gravel. Exactly. Correct. Yeah. Um, they should have taught me geology in kindergarten. I don't mm. understand why that doesn't come up sooner. Sorry it about seems, that. It seems like this is really like the time that kids need to be informed about how yeah. difficult it is. And also the fact that like Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, the fact they're like pulling gemstones out of the ground that are like pre-cut. It's like, that's not realistic, Disney. Yeah, that's one. Not realistic that they're pre-cut and also not realistic that they're that plentiful and just easy to find. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, those, those Seven Dwarves are are really living a humble lifestyle they really are because the amount of gems they're pulling out of the earth they should be like owning the kingdom you know <laughs> yes absolutely yeah maybe that's a maybe that's a fan theory yeah that the seven dwarves are actually the ones who own the kingdom wow i know wow they Who'd just live in this cottage because they understand <laughs> the humble life they're right they're like we, there's no reason to like like um you know show off our wealth Okay. Right. They they read we dopamine share a nation. Room. All right. <laughs> they read dopamine nation and found that the fulfilling lifestyle is better than the filled lifestyle. Right. As it were. And like we're good. We're we're wealthy. We're fine. We share a room. We go to work every day. We still do the physical mining ourselves. <laughs> it's no big. It's no big. Where do the gemstones go? Where do they go with Snow White? I don't know. Where do they go? Where do they go? Where, and they're harvesting so like 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 cartfuls a day. Cartfuls <laughs> a day. And they go back to the same mine. If if they filled like the bottom, so with a, <laughs> if with I a, found a single gemstone that looked like that ever, I think I'd be doing pretty good. Probably. Yeah. Pro- any one of those would be on display in a museum on yeah. a, like, on like a global scale. <sighs> it always comes back to treasure on this podcast. <laughs> It's because treasure is the literal best. <laughs> treasure is the best. It's it, because it's the quest, man. It's the this, quest. This, it's, it's like the rock tumbler all over again. Remember when we talked about rock tumblers? Yeah. Yeah. It's like that. I think when I was a kid, I think this is the thing that really disappointed me the most about the rock tumbler is that like, I don't think I thought gemstones were coming out of it, but the idea that it was going to like make this like nice smooth rock was already just an exciting prospect to me. Mm-hmm. And that was like, yo, it's going to take a while. And I was like, no big deal. I'm a patient child. Like, to me, a while would have been like a week, you know, which is still not a while for a rock tumbler. No, it's not. It's not. But that's why I said TikTok is so fun because they're like, all right, guys, we're putting these in. We'll see you in a month. Yeah. Month's over. Let's see how they did. Yeah. It's like, oh, that was nice. I didn't have to wait the whole month. Man, I'm going to have to go inspect this. This sounds like something Luke 
would really enjoy. Luke loves himself a good rock. There's Rocks no are doubt. pretty great. And They're you know, if, he, and if you were to allow him to go and discover some great rocks in the wild, <clears throat> put them in, think about how good he's going to feel about himself. If when you he think is. Luke's not already bringing in wild <laughs> rocks to the house, he'd be dead wrong. Maybe, maybe he's, maybe he has a ruby tucked <clears throat> into one of those. Maybe. He just got, just got a tumble. In fact, it. probably. Probably. Kid's got an eye. Yeah, there's yeah. no doubt. He came, I came home yesterday, and this is something that bothered me. He likes to like dig in the dirt, and so there's always just all this dirt on the sidewalk up to my house because uh-huh. there's like mulch beds on either side. And I was like, oh, man, here again. He's like, no, no, don't, don't clean it up. I made a dirt sun, and then like I looked at it more, and like sure enough, he'd made like like the the garden bed is like curved, and he made like the shape of a sun with like rays coming off of it all the way around. I was like, so you did, so you did. This is good. Okay, I won't <laughs> clean it up. Yet, <laughs> <laughs> this is good. This is good quality. You had an idea and you executed. Dirt son, get it. <laughs> I'm proud of him. Yeah, I'm proud of him. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, on that note, I feel like we're at a good spot to to close out for today. Uh, but if you guys have any personal experience with rock tumblers, be sure to let us know. Let us know how many gemstones you discovered out of your gri- your driveway gravel. Uh, you know what didn't help was that our grandparents had. Herkimer diamonds had Herkimer diamonds. You're right. They're from Herkimer County, New York. So their gravel, like if you like at certain angles is like shimmery because like there's like li- actual little crystalline crystal structure. structure in the gravel. So it was fun to literally walk around their driveway and you could find like little crystals. You could like, find crystals that were like the size of quarters. Yeah. Like you're so right. Yeah. This did no, not I, help. Okay. I wasn't that total. I wasn't that delusional. Yeah. This is this is exactly what the problem was. Yeah. The driveway strikes again. The driveway at Grandma and Grandpa's. I'm I'm like guffawed right yeah. now. I'm like, <laughs> I can't even believe I've never thought about the driveway before. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah. Because as a kid and to this day, I have been obsessed with treasure and that it gave me this illusion that it was so attainable it was right there all i needed to go was all i needed to do was go and scour the driveway and it would man you know know what's interesting is that at you can go there are like herkimer diamond mines you can go pay to go out with like a hammer and just like smash rocks open and see if you can find it or or it turns out you can just order a bed of gravel for your driveway and uh, go nuts and just, and just walk around <laughs> just and walk you'll around. have way better results <laughs> than standing in the sun wailing on rocks with hammers yeah goodness me all right guys well i need all of your feedback from today's episode if you happen to read dopamine nation and you have something that you find is a is a is something like a dopamine source for you that you're willing to now exclude i'd be curious to know what that could look like i think that would be very interesting all of your uh thoughts and feelings can go over to popcornculturepod at gmail.com we do appreciate all of your feedback additionally if you'd like to support us on patreon you can do so over at patreon.com slash popcorn culture we have a variety of extremely cool and fun tiers uh if you'd like a little additional access to the pop otherwise until next time pop pop pop